Hey guys, welcome to Cricket Fanatics Magazine. Now, one of the most exciting aspects of the new domestic structure is when certain provinces get to see their homeboys come back and play for their province again. Now, this is one of those occasions where Bonant has brought back someone that is kind of, I would say, a hero to them. Someone that has grown up in the area and around Bonant Park, of course, coming from Robinson. I mean, someone that is you guys can all relate to. And so I thought, why not bring him onto a show, have an exclusive with him, so that you guys can just get to know him better and get more excited about seeing him back in Borland Colors. So welcome to the show, Ferris Guy Adams. Uh, it's, it's excellent to be able to talk to you and actually get to know more about Borland. This will be like an education for me too. And not only for me, because I think there's other guys that are that have signed to Borland recently, the likes of Imran Manak and Michael Copeland, new guys that have never been maybe to Borland Park as a Borland player, of course, because they're new signings, that would want to get to know more about Borland as a province and the surrounding areas, what they can do there, etc. But let's start with you. Um, I want to know what it was like to grow up in Robertson, first and foremost, and also um, what you, how your cricket career started. Yeah. Growing up in Robertson, it's a very small town, but we actually very close, close as a community. We do care for each other. And my cricket, my cricket career basically started with playing tennis ball cricket. Everyone started playing in the cricket, in, in the streets cricket. So yeah, I'm still playing that tennis ball cricket. We've got a league here on Sunday league. So that's nice to join on Sundays. So my cricket career actually started playing softball cricket and went into like schools cricket. But the thing is, I never, I never made it actually when I played on schools from grade five to, to high school. I never made it as a cricketer. I always loved cricket, playing cricket. I only, I only represented Poland after schools when I was done with school. So that was actually when I, my first, got my first colors for Poland Rural. And that feeling just came back to me and say, yes, this is what you want to do. This is what you love. So my, my cricket career actually had a, had a huge turn on school and had a big return after school. So I think I, I will say after school it is actually where I got to sign more as a cricketer. So in certain areas, you know, that people will have people to look up to, you know, uh, especially in the southern suburbs where cricket is quite big. Um, there's a lot of people to look around. You can just go to your local club and you'll see some people that you can look up to and maybe yeah, emulate. It wouldn't have been maybe the same for you. Uh, so how did you find out that cricket was something that you loved and that's something that you wanted to do for the rest of your, your career? It was actually by watching cricket as a, as a young boy. So I started watching, like, I think Brad, Brad Lee was that time on the scene, just came onto the scene, Brad Lee and Saeb Akhtar. It was, it was two of my role bowlers back then. So I just started laughing at the way they, they bowled how quick they were bowling in the best and were actually scared of them. So I was just, after watching a game of them, I just went out to the streets, go play the NSA, trying to cooperate what I saw there on TV, what they did. And I just felt, I just felt in love with what I was doing because I could see I was going to young kids there in the streets and they were also getting scared of it. So I think that the love, the love of that came from watching cricket the whole time. Yeah, like you say, we don't have a lot of cricket around here. So... I had to watch cricket on TV and I fell in love with it. Mm. So you mentioned that it wasn't Borland for you from the beginning. It, it only started afterwards. But that transition, can you talk to me? What was important about you as a person to be able to remain focused um, and, and to play so that, that it pushed you to, to better heights and obviously getting your Borland call up for the first time? I would say Borland was always there. Like on high school, I saw, saw some of my friends, teammates, um, school teams, that they were getting Bulan colors. And the dream was always to play for a Bulan side. I never managed to able to play for a Bulan side when I was on school, still playing cricket on school. So that, that dream actually on school faded away a bit. And after school, and I'll, I'll tell the story to a lot of people who asked me about my cricket after school, because I, I had one friend. And he's still one of my closest friends because I, I gave up cricket basically. And oh. he came to me. Uh, he, he was my 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 club cap, my club um, coach, and uh, he, he's now the coach, but he was the captain at that time. 
So he came to me and said, hey, listen, you've got a gift. You need to come play club cricket. I played one or two club games. I picked up, I think in the first game, I picked up a fifer, a second game, also a fifer. And at that time, he was the, he was the captain of the Poland rural side. And he spoke to, to his coach and said, listen, we, I've got a youngster here. We need to look at him, give him a shot. And after that, when I got my shot there in the Bulan uh, rural side, I just never looked back. I just went all the way in. Wow. Now, I spoke to some fans from Robinson about a year and a half ago when I did a fan cam. And they screamed into the mic about you. For them to come all the way to come watch you in a night game is obviously a massive support from them that they, they feel that for you. You've come, become almost like a hero to them. Do you know that that's your responsibility as a person coming from Robinson and, and, and haven't made it as a, as a cricketer? Yeah, and like, like I say, I'm playing softball as well, tennis ball cricket, because I, I know I, I've got a lot to give victory youngsters as well to my community as well, because they, they've got my back all the way from day one. Whenever I, wherever I play, when I play at Poland Park, when I go to New York, they will make taxes up to come and watch me play. So I know I've mm-hmm. got a big responsibility to, to them as well, to give back to them. And I'm just thankful for the support that they gave me. Since then, like you said, you never looked back. And you clearly didn't because, I mean, you played for the Cobras. You played for the Knights recently. Talk to me about playing franchise cricket, how that opened your mind to to different challenges, how you dealt with those challenges, and how it changed your life to be able to get your first contract um, playing professional cricket? When I, when I played for, for, for Boland, I started playing for Boland. And I know the, the next step was franchise cricket. So my next goal was is to, is to play franchise cricket, but my first goal was to just perform for Boland so I can, so the people at the franchise level could see, okay, yeah, I've got someone here that can, can fill that spot. Once I started playing for it was it was a it was a big step because you used to watch the, these guys on TV. Now you're playing with them. First of all, you you had to put that aside when you in the change room or when you're on the field with them. But playing for it's a it's a it's a big challenge, but it's a nice challenge as well. It developed my cricket from here to there in the moments of 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 a, a season. Because when you're playing for it, you have to be on the money on all the time. So yeah, playing franchise and getting my first contract with the franchise actually it helped me financially as well. It helped me growth as well because now I can give back to my family and to friends and people who need extra stuff for me. I, I can give back to them now as well. So playing franchise had a massive, massive role in giving back to the community as well. We know what type of cricketer you are for this go and. One of the main things about you is that you're so versatile. It doesn't matter what format you play. It doesn't matter whether it's with a bat or whether it's with a ball. Obviously, you being an all-rounder. But you've also become one of the first targets for majority of T20 Mzanzi Super League teams, you would say, um, on the list when it comes to T20 cricket. You've become almost like a specialist, like a special weapon for majority of teams. Can you give me some insight into how, to you, how you master the T20 game, um, especially your bowling side of things? Because, you know, uh, it's, it's very difficult to bowl in T20 cricket. <laughs> it's very difficult because you go all over the south. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying to keep it simple when I'm playing T20 cricket. It's, we, we all see like the batsmen are just trying to hit the ball out of the park. And that's that is what fans actually come to watch. They don't come to watch the bowler to see how we do it. They come to watch and see how the sixes and fours are flowing. But for me as a bowler, I'm just trying to keep it simple. The set on my nerves, because I know there's going to be a day that I'm going to get it. But I know also there's going to be a day when I'm going to pick up wickets. So you have to balance by getting that, that afraid factor out of your system about you're going to bowl in T20 cricket. Because for me, it's a nice challenge. Because it's going to be either me taking wickets or you're going to hit before I'm. And I had, I had to make up my mind and say, listen, this is what I want to do. This is what I'm good at. So let me just try and keep calm and stick to what I know best, what I can do. So bowling in, T20, in T20 cricket, it is a tough job, but it's a job you, you must want it. You must want to do it. And that's, that's the thing about me. When I'm, when I'm playing T20 cricket, I want to bowl in that situation but when we get pumped under the pump. Many people will call that BMT, and that's something definitely that you do have. Um, <laughs> uh, your, nick, your nickname, of course... Uh, I mean, I'm around the Cape was was Iceman. Uh, do you remember how Iceman. you got that nickname? 
I actually, I actually don't remember it because I know one uh, reporter came up to me and he said, "You know where, where you got the name from?" I said, "No." He said, "I, I, I gave you that name." So I asked him, "Why did you give me that name?" He said, "Whenever you watch me play cricket and I'm under the pump, I always look calm. It never looks like I'm sweating or nervous or anything like that. I just look calm. So that's why he gave me the name Ice Man." <laughs> <laughs> Okay, another question I have for you is about being in the dressing room with so many experienced guys when you were at the Copas. So, like, for example, what did you learn from a guy like Vernie Vilander, Hashim Amla, um, the likes of Dale Stain when they were there at the Blitz, of course, and so many experienced guys that you were around that, that many would look up to. Um, you, They were your teammates. So what sort of lessons did you pick up from them? I picked up life lessons in, in sporting lessons because when you're in that environment where you're around senior players, you have to ask the questions. Because if you're not going to ask the questions, you're never going to grow as a cricketer or as a person. And they are actually down-to-earth people. If you ask them something, they will give you an answer. So, like, I spoke to Vernon a lot. I've bowled a lot with him and he helped me with bowling as well. He told me just to be clear on what you want to do, where you want to land the ball, and what you, want, what you actually want the batsman to do. So things like that actually made sense to me because when I, when I was growing up as a bowler, I just wanted to bowl fast. Forget, forget about bowling line and length or summing up a bet and stuff like that. But when I started sp speaking to, to that guy, it actually gave me a clear picture on what I want to do and what I need to do to succeed at the next level. But if you have guys like that in your team, you have to ask the questions. Because if you ask the question, you're going to learn as a cricket and you're going to learn fast. Mm. Now, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about your new venture because you obviously picked Borland as the team to represent. I mean, was it a no-brainer for you to, to, to go back to Borland? <laughs> <laughs> it was sort of a no-brainer to come back home, yeah. Because everyone is here, my family, my family and everyone is here, my kids are here as well. So it, it was a, it was a no-brainer, but I, I did enjoy my time with the Knights. I love the guys there. Yeah, I made some good friends, played some good cricket, had some good relationship on and off the field. But like you say, Poland was actually, it was a no-brainer for me to come back home to see all my family again and stuff like that. Because I know my support system is here in Poland. And I want to inspire kids from my rural area because we don't get the chance to play at the, at the higher level. So if they can see here, here is our homeboy, Fresca Adams, playing there. I can also make it to go play there. So... It was, it was actually a no-brainer for me to come home and to come play for Poland, just to inspire my friends, my family, and everyone who supports me to see, okay, we've, we've, we've got a leeway in, into the, where we want to go. Mm -hmm. And the next generation of, of, of cricketers in Poland, because, I mean, how important is that? Um, what sort of role are you, do you want to play in the, in the next Frisco Adams or the next person that comes out of Poland? My my role is, is just to be there to, to help everyone who comes there. If you want if, if they ask me something, I'll be there to, to lead them. I'll be there on the field to, to lead them because I've know the environment now, I'll know the people, I'll know the setup. So if the next guy comes in, I'll be open up I'll every any time of the day I'll be there to speak to anyone who wants who wants more questions about what they need to do and how they need to do it. So my role is just there to, for the for the young and the upcoming generation to to be actually like a stepping stone to ask of and to learn of and to help them grow in the cricket. So I'm going to bring up the team. Uh, I've got it for you right here on standby. Um, a very talented team, a very balanced team. Um, I think that uh, it's it's something that that puts Poland in the front seat um, for this division because you guys have really thought about it not only for this season but for next season too. When you look at this squad, who are you most excited about to play with? Um, I know most majority of them you will be, but th with regards to the new guys coming in, um, who are you excited to learn from? I'm actually excited to play with all of them. I haven't played with a lot of these guys here. So... To play with Christian Juncker, played for South Africa, to learn about how he goes about his stuff. To play again with Stian van Sale, well, how, how he was good for us when he played for the Cobras. Carl Ebert, Ardis and I'm, 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 I'm waiting to see about uh, Michael Copeland as well. Another youngster there for us. 
I, I haven't seen him play, but I heard uh, some good stuff about him. Azel Klute there as well, another youngster, good, uh, a good um, quick bowler, fast bowler there. Um, I'm playing with Zeko Abeg and I played with him for Boland, two, uh, two Milan brothers. Yeah, I can't, I can't say enough about them. So yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, looking for, I'm looking forward to spending time with these, with these guys on the field and off the field as well. Mm -hmm. So this comes to a more fun question because specifically to Imran Manakui, we know what he's like. You know, he likes a, a nice good time and he likes to know about where he can go out. Or, you know, obviously, when he goes out on the weekends, etc. Uh, we know about Mikey Copeland. He's going to come here to a different environment and experience something new. Can you give some tips to them on maybe top five places that you could go to around the Borland area that they can, you know, maybe go out for dinner or or have some fun, maybe outdoorsy things that they can do? I think, you're not going to believe, you're not going to believe me now. I've played at Poland for how many years now? And I don't know a lot of places in Poland. <laughs> I'll go there for games, for training. After that, I'll just get in my car and drive back home. So I don't know a lot of places in, in, in Poland, but I know there's a lot of places around Poland. We can go and eat. And or go out for to have a nice time as well. I heard about Funky Buddha there as well, with the sellers. We mana can then can go out to have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> but to be, to be honest with you, I don't know a lot of uh, places in in the ball there. But okay, so we now have a challenge for the Borland supporters. You guys need to put in the comment section where are the top places that these guys can go. Where are the best places for? for food places, for lunch maybe, for supper, um, things that are outdoorsy that you can do in the Borland region. We want you guys, that's a challenge for you, to put it in the comments section. Lastly, Ferrisco, I just want a message from you to the Borland fans. You can do one in English, but you can also do one in Afrikaans for me too. And the Borland faithful is, you know, what's all the after this almost go on this team. The after game was, what, in the end, he was a chance for the rest. We ask you all that you have a game that you can use to use it for the cricket, one day cricket, T20 cricket. We ask you all support and we also thank you all support that you all have over all the years for us. So yeah, we hope you all have a chance to see in the in the season that now can begin, and I know you all will be us. To all the Bolan supporters, to all the people around Palm, please come back here, boy, to see Bolan Park when we play there. I know you've been there for us for a lot of years and your support is faithful to us we love playing there at Bulan Park because you made us you made you made the playing ground a nice playing ground for us when you guys are there so please come out and support us again this upcoming season so guys that's all we have for you today thanks a lot for tuning in don't forget the hashtag be bold Borland. And also don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click on the notification bell for all updates and future updates and videos on this channel. Thanks a lot for tuning in and we'll see you guys again very soon.